Happy Monday, everybody. This is the mm, 21st, mm, yes, 21st <laughs> conversation. Um, dope ass powwow of creative quarantine. And I'm here with just literally a truly magical person, um, regardless of the fact that you were on a show <laughs> about magic, like in general, um, a truly oh. magical person, a dear heart, like a, a, a giving person with so much energy and amazingness, Jay Taylor. Oh, right back at you. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you to say. Uh, I mean, but anybody who follows you like really, really knows you have this, this, you utilize your platform to promote good energy, to bring in good things, to amplify other people, to share love and promote positivity. And it's just so amazing to embrace the cyclical nature of giving good energy and, and receiving it back. Mm. And so I, I would be remiss to be like, you know, that is that is a key core thing to who you are. And I love it. Like from Thank you. The images with your castmates to mm. playing music, uh, to the couch session concert you did yeah. right after quarantine started. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really a vibe. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, I think, you know, there's a lot of darkness and challenges in the world. And, and I, I think it's important for us to, to shine a light on the positive and, and to give back wherever we can, especially given, you know, this platform that we have you know, to inspire and empower people, I think is the greatest gift we can give. So my hope is to do that in some, some way, shape or form. <laughs> so. Um, so I got to ask like the first yeah. question of that, I like, how has life, this is now week five or six for most people. Yeah. Uh, so like in, in, in acknowledging that the conversations we had in week one, week two, even week three were very, very <laughs> different than the conversations we had in week four. Oh, um, yeah. So where are we? week five, socially distant around our <laughs> plethora of pets. Um, yes, there are, there are many. They will come and visit in just a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, it's been crazy. <laughs> just to be like really transparent, because I also believe in transparency and honesty. And and I think that is what the world needs more of. Um, it's been really interesting for me because on one hand, um, I kind of jokingly said that it was like, grieving in a lot of ways like we go through all the stages of grieving there's like anger and there's like sadness and there's you know isolation there's all those things right and i think i went through a lot of those things because uh, for many reasons one being that um i thrive in connection connecting with people i thrive uh, by doing creative things and knowing that i'm i'm giving to someone or something and having that feedback and also, you know, having the end of five years of a series that I just loved. So there's been a lot of just emotional stuff come up and um, and processing. But you know, in the end, um, I'm and I'm also a doer. I don't stop doing. <laughs> I get very little sleep usually, and I'm um, I've found that I've had to just surrender to just being and not doing. And that's been a very interesting thing for me because I've been so used to the antithesis. Um, so that's been challenging. But I also think that those challenges and the, the things that um, are coming up for all of us are things that are important. It's, it's a space where we get to learn and evolve and grow because we're, we're having to remove and let go of all of the outside circumstances, everything um, that we are typically do on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're just having to be with ourselves or our significant others, which can also bring up some stuff and like a lot of lessons and growth there as well. And so for me, it's just been a, like, a, honestly, just a deep learning period of like, what does it feel like to just be and not feel like I have to do and, and allow myself to process and once um, I process, like, what then? Uh, is there a space in which I can give back in this new environment? How do I learn to to cope and to be and to continue to be creative and flourish in a space where I'm having to do that at home? And it was interesting when doing the couch concerts, like you mentioned, it was so beautiful. And I was so grateful and excited and I had amazing singers, amazing feedback. And I'm I'm going to do it again because of that and um but the point of it of me sharing it is that there was a moment where i was like this is strange for me because i'm not in person with people i'm not one-on-one -on -one with everybody i can't see the audience in front of me usually like on the uh, 
the feedback and I was like, am, are, are they impacted by what I'm doing here? I don't know. And so I really had to just do what felt right for me and honor what was going on for me rather than doing it based on what somebody else needed in the moment. And that's not something I'm used to because I'm always wanting to do it for someone else. And so going, oh, well, what is it that I feel in this moment? And so there's just a lot of growth in this space. And that's a really good point because that's the same thing kind of here, right? Like we do have um, live question and answer. Folks can put yeah. stuff in the comments, but like a lot of the views actually come later, right? Like folks mm -hmm. get a chance to watch it. And, you know, after five weeks, it's been, it's really amazing to hear how someone's interview and something someone said three weeks ago has mm -hmm. impacted or two weeks ago has impacted someone or has made them think or that they've recommended to someone to watch because it's a different feedback loop for performers when we mm -hmm. don't have this live event space where folks can really come. And it's a new, it's a new skill set, right? It's Absolutely. a whole new skill set. And and also it takes so much more confidence, right? It's like it's yeah, a different yeah. thing, you know, and it used to be with TV because we didn't used to have this kind of fan groups and Twitter and all these places where people could do okay. live tweets of the show and do the feedback like instantaneously. It's now much more like stage than what mm -hmm. it used to be. Yeah. And being on stage, you get that. Like the audience laughs, you know, the yeah. audience yeah. the audience cries. You hear someone go, oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I, I did a thing and it made him respond. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it is, it's, it's so it's so interesting to see that happen. And I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. And I thought about I really I really thought about this. And I thought that the goodbye in the way that it could be a goodbye digitally for the show was mm -hmm. trying its best to honor how much growth each and every one of the characters had gone through. And let's be yeah. real, no more uh, significant than Katie. Um, <laughs> but, you know. I yeah. still was like on the on the day of the of the finale, I literally said to myself, they were supposed to be at a party. Like they were supposed to be at a premiere. They were yeah. all supposed to be sitting at the couch. Like in my head, I'm like, they were supposed to be together. Like that's yeah. that was that to me was the only logical part of that because you are a family. You've been doing this show yeah. for so long. Um, and I think it's it's such an interesting development. Like for you, how did you know how how did you get did you guys like get on a Zoom? Did you Skype each other? Like <laughs> I just can't imagine that you yeah. and like, everybody else weren't yeah together. Yeah, yeah. So there was a moment where I it was a couple days until the the finale, and I was just like, we're not going to be together. This is so strange. Like how. I, I just couldn't fathom it. So I immediately emailed our producers and I was like, I'm creating a, here's a Zoom link. Um, help me get an email list together. I need to get everyone together. And so we got everyone on Zoom. And so I, I just like, I just spearheaded it because I was like, we can't not be together. There's, it just did not seem like fathomable in that moment. And so it was actually really beautiful and power, but also strange because <laughs> Because um, typically, you know, we're talking to each other, but there's so many, there were so many of us. I think at one point there was like 30 of us on, on a Zoom call. We wanted, I mean, I'm sure there could have been more, but 30 of them. And so um, we essentially were just, because we're live tweeting with our fans as well. And so we're muting everyone and then just live tweeting and just so we could just have each other's face there until we communicated after, but just so we could sit and be with each other in that moment. And so that was actually really really special and really powerful and i think it's a moment that i know i'll cherish and remember forever and um like in the midst of of quarantine we were still able to find a way to connect and celebrate and um after um the finale we, we did we just celebrated and we were just saying how grateful we were for the journey and reminisced about some fun memories that we had and experiences we had over the years and it was just a really beautiful way to to connect in the midst of all of this and and we're so lucky. We're so lucky to have these these like the technology that we do and the platforms that we do to be able to connect in in a time like this. Because I can't imagine you know fifty years ago, yeah, you know, how people well, did. And I think the coolest thing is like I you know fan bases are fan bases, but the magicians fan base, <laughs> but also the cast yeah. and the social platforms are so responsive. 
because it is that kind of vibe, it does not surprise me that there was probably this weird concophony of people trying to talk at the same time. On the <laughs> because there's so much energy. And that last episode was. Yeah, thank you. That's all to our creators, writers, all of them. Well, I love when someone looks at the last episode and it's kind of like, okay, so what are we going to do? Yeah. Everything? Yeah. Cool. Go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. And then they also left it in a space that, you know, I, I think I said this at one point where somebody asked, like, how, are, are they going to honor, like, all the stories? And I was like, I think the fact that they didn't have a conclusion, so to speak is how they did because it, it's not something that just dies there and ends like this is something that lives on and it lives on because it lives in each of us and and it's a way to tell that um tell the audience and everybody that's been involved that that they still live on the stories live on we live on and so i really loved how they did that i think it was really beautiful and powerful I mean, it's truly like the concept of fillery and further. Like, it's, yes, it's, I love that you just said that. And speaking of, <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather be in fillery. <laughs> I mean, right now, <laughs> right now, yeah. I ordered this the moment we got into quarantine. I was like, I don't have enough swag. <laughs> I'm gonna get a fillery. <laughs> Because I'd rather be in Fillory. <laughs> I've been eyeing the B and Key shirt, so that's gonna be happening. Yes, I have. It's it's one of the it's one of the best like logos ever. And really? the funny thing is, I got obsessed. So I've read. So I have the books, and I was in the um, middle of the second book when I left New York, and I just had to get it on Kindle. But I remember seeing the first season, and then reading the book, and going. Oh, I am so happy these are completely different, but also so intertwined. And yeah. that, you know, and that that is why I totally agree about the ending. Like I think the yeah. ending was perfect. They got to for the first time, and it's such a it's such a it's such a powerful moment. For the first time, they this is their story. It wasn't anybody's story. They weren't a pawn in someone else's story. No one was had them in a time loop. No one else had more information than they did. It was just them. I know it was yeah. pretty phenomenal. Just got chills. Just got chills. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that so much. Yeah, the way that John, I remember this so well, John McNamara, um, he said this, I think, probably during the pilot, actually. And I it just stuck with me five almost six years ago at this point. Um, where he's like, the books are like this linear structure, right? And this, uh, with a TV show, he's like, we can hear, like, we stay on this line, but we keep going up and down and finding other avenues and other ways, but we still come back to that through line. And I thought that was just such a beautiful way to put it. And I think they really did that justice. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, and you, you could look at, there's so, there's so few stories where you can look at and go, I'm okay that this didn't end up the way I thought it was going to end up. It still ended up really great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad really. I didn't get what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, it's that whole adage about you might not get what you want, but you get what you need. Speaking yeah. of, in yeah. this moment, you are, you have other things that you do. I know yeah. the magicians are here, especially because yeah. it's so new and the end is so close. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know I, there's a rewatch situation happening. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Me, so Brit so Brittany Kern and I decided we're going to live tweet continue the live tweeting um every wednesday and so we're on episode three this coming week so yeah season one episode three whoever wants to join <laughs> and it's honestly like really beautiful and it's like weirdly honoring the whole journey and being able to look back it's just been it's been so lovely well so and you, can, you can really <laughs> go back and it's just like rediscovering the seat because i've gone back and like watched seasons just because because yeah yeah and you could go back and it's rediscovering all of the things and all the little easter eggs and all of the mm -hmm. character traits that were laid and all the threads that were kind of left loose intentionally for later yeah, it's just totally. so phenomenal um mm -hmm. like, like for the for the in, like the first time that i they, the katie is doing asl i'm like okay yeah, yeah. where is this going <laughs> Um, I know it's so good, and then it becomes this part of her character, and 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 also it it honors the fact that 
that is a part of our culture that is not spoken about enough. Um, yes. And right, and to have characters, and the fact that the actress, and she's actually one of my favorite actresses ever, um, who was hearing impaired, was an actually hearing impaired actress. Exactly. Yeah. Said so much about the show, um, which I still, it's the most feminist sci fi show I have ever. Uh, thousand percent. Thousand percent. Yeah. Hands down. Um, yeah. Marley Matlin is like one of those, I mean, I've idolized her forever. And and she also, she was like, when she was on the L word, oh, I, right? like, I, I was just like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And yes, I'm wearing sweatpants because I can in my house. <laughs> but they're cute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, but Marley, um, going back to that, I yeah, I, I I don't give Marley enough credit for how much she changed my life and my perspective, and and that's also a testament to the writers and producers and what they did by bringing her onto the show. Um, I just want to touch on that for a minute because I think it's such an important topic we don't as like able-bodied hearing people we don't think about people with different abilities than our own on a daily basis it's not something that we just innately think about and i i just realized and and this is not like to say anything negative about anybody that we worked with but when marley was on set at times people would start talking to her and she literally and she has the best humor ever ever oh i can only imagine like just firecracker like we'll say whatever funniest best human and she's like um do they know that i'm deaf or do they think that i can hear them <laughs> like she would just say these things to me and like because she she and i communicated really well and i i know some sign language and and also she reads lips really well but um so it was just this like it was a yes funny in that moment but it really got me thinking about how people just don't even process or think about others in that way all the time like and, and i think that's that goes from like different abilities to different like learning experiences like how we process i don't think we as humans innately think um from like a deeply empathetic space of, I wonder how they experience life. I wonder how they process it. I wonder if they can experience it the same way that I am. And so it actually empowered me for a couple reasons. It empowered me to, to listen differently, not just with my ears, but, but with my heart, with like the feeling, with the sight, with things, other aspects and other elements that were in front of me. And so I learned, I learned that from her in a big way. And I think, um, I think we can learn so much from people with different abilities than our own. And it, it actually, because you're asking me about the projects I'm doing, it actually empowered me to write a piece um, about, I'm going to ruin the ending, but that's okay. People will still watch it. Um, I wrote, uh, wrote and filmed a short and it's um, kind of sci-fi based. It was this like magical world, but it, it starts out and we follow this little girl who is essentially dealing with abuse in her home. And I wanted to show how um, creativity and, imagination can be so healing to trauma. Um, and I'm also saying that because I think that's an important thing to remember during these times where we feel a lot of anxiety and things like that, that like tapping into some semblance of creativity, whether that's like dancing around your house or singing or whatever feels good to you. I think it's a really powerful tool that we can use. Um, and it's something that I learned as a child dealing with a lot of trauma in, in my, my upbringing. And so we follow this little girl and she runs into her bedroom and she reads a storybook that starts coming to life in her imagination. And um, it takes her on this beautiful journey, but we don't realize um, that she's deaf until the end. And it, I was empowered to do this because I think, and I used uh, a little girl who was deaf. And so it, as a director and writer, I got to communicate on a different level and and really be conscious and aware of how somebody else receives something and, um, and, you know, not just, you know, learning for myself, but also, you know, making sure that other people were accommodated, having a, an interpreter on set, um, making sure that every environment was comfortable um, because everybody has different needs. And just, I think it was important. So I learned so much from her, long story short. 
That's amazing. So what is the name of the piece? How can folks get it? Is it? It's uh, it's in post-production right now. So we're, we're finishing it up. Um, it kind of got, you know, it's, it's lagging a little bit only because, well, festivals are not happening at the moment. So yeah. there isn't, it's actually a beautiful thing. There isn't a rush to get it done. So I'm, I'm just taking my time to get it done. But we're doing some really interesting things with sound and color. And so it's a short, it's called Within the Silence. Uh, and that will be out, uh, I'm going to say September when we're all out of this. <laughs> so, Well, and I think that's the other thing. Um, and I love that people have been shifting in their very different ways. Like, right, like there, there's a point where some of us are like, hey, this is a thing that we've been meaning to do anyway. I'm going to do it. And some mm-hmm. folks are like, suddenly we don't have to rush. And it's such a, it's such a new, yeah. particularly, and we're contemporaries age-wise, um, yeah. ish, uh, and it's a new thing for our generation to be able to mm-hmm. say, we don't have to be doing 12 things. Yeah. We do not have to be rushing right now. Um, and we can also focus on the things that we care about and the things that other folks should care about. Right. Cause I think above all this, there's this other layer of having the privilege to be able to step back. Um, and what does that mean? And how do you inspire by just being you? Um, mm-hmm. And that is that is such an interesting thing because we've been having these conversations about. Um, I had this conversation the other day. I have a show on New York Public Radio, and we were talking about the confusion between um, reopening the economy and getting to a place where we can move forward, and how people are confusing this idea of getting to the other side as we can all get back to work versus less people will get sick. And how do we get to a point where there's a vaccine and how do we get to a point? And so I think even in in what you're just saying and and, and Mm -hmm. utilizing that ability to see through other people's eyes and and really being able to garner perspective is so amazing. So amazing. Well, I think, you know, I always try and look on the positive in every situation. And I think, yes, there are some horrific things happening because of this. People are dying. People are losing jobs. Our economy is crashing. There's a lot of horrible things that are happening. Um, but I will say, if we try and find the positives, I think it's forcing people to think about humanity as a whole. Like my actions of like going outside, um, not wearing a mask, um, putting my hand on like a, a doorknob that you know I cough into that you know might spread it to somebody else and it keeps going like we're forcing we're being forced to look at our own actions and the impact that that it makes on the many and knowing that it's a ripple effect and that it really um I think is forcing us to have more empathy and understanding in a lot of ways and it's waking people up in a lot of ways not only to to people outside and how we impact the world but also ourselves, like you talked about, like the doing and like feeling like we can just like be for a moment. And um, I think that goes back to a lot of, you know, societal programming over the thousands of years of like being in survival. And like when we do, we're surviving and we are like constantly moving and constantly going in order to make sure that we don't like and it's but that's a scarcity mentality. We're operating out of fear rather than operating out of um out of like belief and confidence and and um and trust that that we can handle it and and I think people are really seeing that like that you know we're figuring it out like in the midst of this people are having to figure it out and not surviving but um just learning to cope and learning to to operate and learning to look at ourselves and I mean there's there's so much to gain I think from this if we if we look at it truly so correct me if I'm wrong, but I am pretty sure that you consider yourself uh, an empath um, <laughs> and really being able to read energy, which, you know, it's such a beautiful space to be in, particularly as a creative, as an actor, as someone who directs and writes and, and is able to put yourself in other people's shoes. Like, to me, you're not completely different from Katie, but there are some significant <laughs> differences, right? Um, and even the other roles I've I don't seen. Know. <laughs> Because I've I've seen you, I've seen Aquarius and True Blood, and like I've seen the little places that I like where I see these sparks of other pieces of personality, but also characters that are like they have their have they have their shield up. Um, yeah. They aren't yeah. necessarily the empath 
uh, personality is where I'm going with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really funny. Are, yeah. I love that you just said that. Yeah. It's interesting. How are you staying grounded right now? Like, are you instituting mm-hmm. other things in your daily life? Or are you, cause I'm sure you already had things in place, but this is yeah. a very unique space in human history. Very much so. Um, yeah. So Thank you for saying all of that, first of all. Um, I actually went down a rabbit hole about being a super feeler last night and like (laughs) just a Google rabbit hole. Um, (laughs) So very much an empath. Um, It's it's interesting that as somebody that is a a very feeling oriented person and um, operates spontaneously and instinctually and um, that's how like the creative juices flow through me typically, I've actually found, especially, and this is for people that are living with a significant other or family member or things like that, where we're having to really face a lot of things. We're having to coexist in a space where we would typically not be living and working and breathing and eating and sleeping in constantly. A lot of people go to an office. We, you know, there's, um, or, you know, kids are going to school. And my best friend, she's got two kids at home trying to like work her typical, you know, nine to five and um, then trying to handle her husband and then her mom who, or her mother-in-law who's a nurse that she's now having to live with who's dealing with COVID patients. Like there's a, a lot of stuff happening in, in households right now. Point is, um, I didn't realize how much freedom I was used to if like creative freedom where, um, you know, I've set up a space in my house that feels very creative and it feels very grounding and feels very safe. And that's something that I do innately. And I think it's really important to do that in this space to, to have an environment that you're feeling good in that feels safe, that feels grounding, that feels comfortable, that can somehow support those creative juices. Um, but the thing that I've realized is how much structure is actually important during this time. Mm. So because I'm, or at least for me, this isn't going to resonate with everybody. Everyone has their own experience and needs, but um, I've always been one to just kind of fly off the seat of my pants and be like, I'm inspired. I'm going to do this thing. And then I go and I do it. I'm a doer and I just get it done. Right. But in this phase, I'm like, can't do that. Can't go outside except for walking my dog, you know? So, um, so then my partner is living and breathing and working here too. And then, so having to, when they're on calls all day long and then um, I thrive in a space of like silence or like playing music really loudly, you know, it's really having to figure out a schedule of like, okay, I really need in the morning, I have um, my morning routine, which is, uh, has been really powerful for me, which is actually like freedom dance expression. I'll put on music that inspires me. Um, I mean, it, I can go what on is, about what like, is what does the soundtrack sound like? Because look, man, I, I can tell you, <laughs> I am a fan of. We were talking about Janis Joplin right I before we came in. I yeah. am obsessed with music. I am always looking for new playlists. Let, please okay. well, share with the in, world. India Ari is like my go-to. I've loved her for my entire life, ever, um, yes. forever. Right since I, I think I really got into her when I was 17, 18. Yep, that's well, bad. That's years ago that was, but, um, look, long time look, ago. <laughs> I may or may not have been in my first year of college when I bought my first Indiari CD and it wasn't yeah, that old. That. Yeah, yeah, I think we're around the same. So that's, uh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> All right, so I, I choose. Um, nice. The words and lyrics are amazing to that song because it's about choice. It's about choosing every morning, every like, I choose to be the best that I can be. I choose to be authentic in everything that I do. Like, I mean, the words are just really powerful. Um, Alicia Keys, We Are Here is another one. Stand Up, which is um, Andrew Day and Common. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rise Up, another Andrew Day, which I love. Oh, I was here. Is. Right? Ugh. I was here. So mm, mm. I was here, like, right? It's like, for me, it's about empowering and how do I leave a mark on the world? How do I inspire how do I start my day feeling like I'm utilizing all that I'm given to make a difference um I mean I can go on but there's a lot of like another NDRA give thanks I am light. there's a lot um but and then there's some other like fun like um 
Roar, Candy Perry, Superwoman, Alicia Keys, like we'll go on. But that's my, there's a lot of inspiration in that one, but that's my inspiration playlist. I do it every morning and I dance to it. Because for me to have that space of like being with myself, it's kind of, I do meditate as well, but it's my form of like movement meditation. Mm. It was like getting me grounded in my body, listening to things that I know empower me and inspire me to feel good in this space. Um, And just connection with myself, connection to what matters to me, connection to what's important. Um, So that's something that I think has been really powerful for me. I hope will support other people. Um, But yeah, and creating that structure and that time in the morning, like no work in the house before 9am so I can have my, like my me time and have that space. And then like for a couple hours during the day, I need that space so I can belt it out. And so from four to six, like I need that time, like it's how do you balance that and how do you communicate in a loving and compassionate way with somebody to, to express your needs in, in this time. And I think oftentimes when we're feeling anxious or having um, aggravation or upset with partner, a partner or, or family member, whatever it might be, it's usually because we don't feel like we're getting our needs met. And so how do we get in touch with our truth and our needs and be vulnerable enough to express that in a way that will be received by somebody where you can work together to create an environment where everybody's thriving in a space that's that's challenging. And that's such a real statement because there are so many of us who, you know, I I went from living alone for five years uh, mm. to not to not live yeah. alone right now. Uh, but I love I love my family and they're amazing and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But there is like a certain adjustment to realizing there's other energies in space and other folks in space and how do you create that space? And I think, and not in a selfish way, I think there is like something to be said for creating space for yourself, whether it's in the day, whether it's in turning the TV off, whether it's in turning the computer off, whether it's in saying, you know, this 30 minutes, I'm going to sit on this chair and mm-hmm. not look at my phone and everybody yeah. will be okay. Um, because it goes back into the doing that goes back into the, how do we best? Um, is, do you feel like there's anything um, you hope that folks will, and I hate to say it like this, because it's always like this yeah. silver lining question um, yeah. because we are in this moment, this moment, we cannot change this moment. This moment exists in time. It will be in, it will be in the history books 20, yes. 30, 40 years yes, from now. Elementary school kids will learn about the COVID-19 outbreak of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would be fooling ourselves to think any differently. If you, as a creative, as just a human, do you feel like there's something you wished and you hope and you pray folks will come out on the other side of this with? Oh, a thousand percent. There's so many things. Yeah. And and I, you know, I've been saying this since the beginning. I'm like, I'm, I see, and, and I think it's just like, I'm, I always say I'm a, a hopeful optimist instead of a hopeless optimist, but I'm a hopeful optimist in the sense that I've always hoped for the best. I always hope for for people to, to grow and to learn from experiences because that's all we can do because we can't change what's happening, right? So we can either be a victim to the circumstance or we can be empowered by it. And the only way to be empowered by it is by learning from it and taking it um, in stride and um, and utilizing this time to the best of our ability. Um, and, and so I'm hoping that it'll empower people um, in some way. Um, I think, in a lot of ways, like I, I think people start to realize what's truly important when, in given circumstances like this. Like I'm looking at the things in, in my house going, I don't need any of this stuff. Like people, when, they're, when we're in survival mode and we're, we really look at like, okay, what do I actually need? I need food. A lot of people think they need toilet paper, but there are bidets and different things that you can use. <laughs> Just there, are um, there are other options. There are other options. But I mean, those are like the essentials and the needs, clothing, um, warmth, whatever those things are, roof over our head. Those are essential needs. And I think people start to realize um, what that is for them. And and I think so I think it sort of dissipates a superficiality in a sense um, that I think we've um we've acquired over over years of consumerism. <laughs> and I um and I think there's also in a lot of ways, we we take for granted um, the connections that we have and the closeness and being able to touch. And because there are so many people that 
are alone right now in this space. And um, I think people will really learn um, what's important to them because they have to. Like when we're in that survival mode, we go into freeze, fight, or flight. And it's like we fight for the things that, that matter to us. And, and so we're really learning what that looks like. Um, outside of, you know, the everyday have tos and the norm that that we've been in. And I think people, and I hope, hope and think people will gain empathy and understanding and um, more kindness. I think I've seen people become afraid. Uh, some people become more afraid given these kinds of circumstances and sort of pull away from other people. But then I, I see the majority of people um, wanting to support and and wanting to reach out and wanting to do something and, and wanting to make a difference and wanting to stay home because they know that it's going to impact the many. Yeah. So empathy I love for it. humanity. All right. Last yeah. but not least, <laughs> last but not least, what are you consuming right now? What books, what, oh, um, are gosh. there any artists that you are supporting right now? Like, yeah, you know, um, oh gosh, so many things. So, one, I will say I did take a couple weeks to just be with myself in a lot of ways because I think it was it was important for me to just be in the process. Um, so I'm just saying that because I think it's important to like for people that are in that space to not feel like they have to do if that isn't for them right now. Um, but yes. gosh, I um, there's a lot of TV shows. <laughs> um, but could, I would say that. Uh, Emily Fletcher has a new book and I'm going to butcher the title of it. I just got it. It is um, stress less, mm. I say, achieve, stress less, achieve more um, Emily Fletcher. Like um, and she is a meditation guru, also a friend. And um, so that um, for me, um, I've been writing a lot and that I think is important for me personally to just, um, not reach outside of myself right now, but to like look within. And so um, I'm going to obnoxiously say that I'm consuming myself. <laughs> and, that's not and obnoxious just, like, at all. That be, yeah, because that's I think beautiful. I just think that's an important thing because I, I think I'm constantly doing that all the time. I'm consuming things outside of me. I'm trying to find the next thing to support in and all those things. And sometimes in order to to do that in order to give we have to fill our own cup and so i'm i'm really in this space of filling my own cup i've slept more in the past you know couple months than i have in my entire life i think because i usually get four hours of sleep and that's just my standard yep. and yep. so sleeping seven hours is a new thing for me and like allowing myself to be in that space so consuming sleep and um love from my adorable new puppy and um you know things that um i'm yeah i'm just kind of surrendering to what is right now but I'm sure I feel like I'm shifting that perspective though. That's been the space that I've been in. And I feel like I'm going to have a lot more to share with you come next week. <laughs> I love it. You know, and I think that's, I think that's so beautiful because the one thing that I love about these conversations is that everyone processes differently. Everyone's yeah. at a different stage. It's okay to pull back, push forward. Yeah. Someone needed to, someone needed to hear that. Um, yeah. We are doers and we are just going, going, going. Um, yeah. For those who want to look you up and find you, how can they look you up? How can they find you? Yeah, um, on Instagram, Instagram awesome. usually. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, ha I haven't even been doing that as much lately, but I'm, you know, started that again. So um, you can find me on Instagram. I usually post everything there um, and that'll link you to my Twitter. That'll link you to everything else. So that's the best, I would say the best space. Also, um, I will say I have been, like learning things that has been something that I've been doing a lot of like learning to be better at piano um you know better like different languages and so for me it's like things like that that um are also powerful just to go back to your previous question no I love it because I think that's the the other thing we normally always tell ourselves we're too busy we're yeah. too busy we're too busy yeah. to learn another language we're too busy to you know go exactly. back I wish, I wish I would do this I wish I could do that and I think that's, you know, there's a reality to busy being for sake of busy. Um, exactly. Exactly. So and I'm really excited. This is amazing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk once I push this in broadcast button, but I want to remind everybody this <laughs> is tomorrow at two Tuesday at two o'clock, because I love alliteration. Uh, we're talking to Alexander Hodge from Tommy and Insecure. It's so pretty. 
He's he really is, and he's such a lovely human being too. Oh, that's, he's, that's more important. He's, he's <laughs> out. Um, I love that. Also, his hair regime is on point. Uh, oh, so yeah. we'll talk to him tomorrow at two o'clock. But I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again, Jay, for making the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, always, thank you. Adore you. <laughs>